Hello, Pet World, and welcome to another edition of Natural Pets TV. I'm Robert Semro, and I am joined by two experts and leaders in the area of natural pet care. Greg Tilford, Heidi Nebula, thank yeah. you for joining me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, we always appreciate it. On this episode, we're going to really dive into something that is really the critical basis and, and the foundation of what we get, and that is immune system support. From your perspective, a holistic herbalist perspective, and I'm putting the pressure on you, my friend, <laughs> what is the immune system? Well, to me, the immune system doesn't start with what everyone expects me to say. It's not in, just in the blood. It's not with um, killer T cells and antibodies in, in the system, macrophages and such. Immunity starts all over. I mean, I believe that the whole body is greater than its parts. The first line of defense in your body is your skin, your respiratory tract, your digestive tract. In fact, over 50% of a human's uh, immune system resides in the gut to stop things before they get into the system. From my perspective, when an infection gets into the system at a blood level, it's already violated the first lines of defense. Mm -hmm. So in order to support this elaborate system of immunity and these immune warriors, so to speak, in the bloodstream, we need to protect the outside perimeters first. And that means that the body has to be properly nourished, it has to be properly cared for and supported, and we have to strive as closely as we can for a state of harmonious balance between all systems of the body. If one fails, then everything suffers in, as a result. Um, if, you, if your body, for instance, is so encumbered with removal of systemic waste from bad protein metabolism, for instance, and you know that could be the result of not just eating bad meat, it could be good meat with liver dysfunction or such, where your, your body's not removing waste then your immune system is going to be encumbered with what it sees as, as invading entities in your bloodstream and it's going to be working hard to deal with something that should have been eliminated from the body in the first place. So my approach toward immune system support begins with proper digestion, proper nutrition and elimination of waste before it builds up into critical problems that result in an immune mediated infl inflammatory response for instance, the case with arthritis and such or heaven forbid a cancer situation where things just go totally out of control and the body just basically starts working against itself. Mm -hmm. So you know in the conventional way of, of thinking I think it's kind of we, we went down this road a long time ago and I, we're having a hard time in modern medicine finding our way out of it. We wait until the immune system's out of balance or disrupted at the most, the most fundamental level of survival bloodstream and systemically and throughout the body. We need to stop it before it gets there. My belief with immunity is that an ounce of prevention is not worth a pound of cure. Prevention is the cure. So um, for me, Im immunity starts with cleaning up the body as a whole. It starts with detoxification, eating the right foods, making sure that you have um, the right mix of antioxidant foods and such going into the body. Chlorophyll, spirulina are good examples. Um, lots of green vegetables. A lot, um, different levels of different kinds of mushrooms are very good for boosting immunity but also serving various functions of, of removing waste from the body while supporting the immune system at the same time. But my message is, is that it's not just about supporting the blood warriors that we're so accustomed to hearing about. Mm -hmm. And I agree with everything you said. It's, it's, I think that immunity is such a big topic to, to tackle and it's so intricate and interconnected with every body system, every cell, every nutrient, every gland. Uh, so it, it, it almost seems impossible to fully address. But you're right, we have to do proper nutrition, filtered water, the, those are basics, but they're like, you know, they're, when you talk about like it's a, a fortified defense, like it's a, a castle, and then all these other things that we do sort of are like gatekeepers, ancillary gatekeepers to promoting it. But it, I think we talked about before, you know, a little bit about this before, that it is, seems very difficult to keep it balanced. And that's what we're all striving for. And absolutely, every time something goes wrong, it manifests as an allergy or something like that, it's not the allergen, the, that you know, point of contact that you necessarily have to address, it's everything, it's lymphatic circulation, blood cleansing, right. um, the digestive, and then also the excretory system, everything has to be filtered out. And then clarified or detoxed, rebuilt, and then kind of rechecked. And mm -hmm. it's a constant process. Every pet's different, every place in their life is different, aging, breed, it's, so it's something that we have to support every day. 
Absolutely. And, you know, it's all interrelated. You know, allergy uh, symptoms, chronic allergies, often, you know, in, in my experiences, people or animals that experience chronic allergies eventually will manifest something like arthritic joints or uh, sebaceous cysts or some other issue, you know, in which case the body is either trying to eliminate something by extraordinary means or just can't at all. Can't, right. So keeping the body working at its optimum best through proper digestion and support of the digestive tract and the liver. And exercise, and right? Exercise. Movement. <laughs> and environmental considerations, again, I mean, we keep talking about that, mm -hmm. but, you know, it, we live in a toxic world. And so you mentioned that it's, it's virtually impossible to maintain uh, immune balance. I agree because we live in a very unbalanced world where the influences upon us are changing all the time, every day and everywhere we go, and our animals too, mm -hmm. every, every place. Well, I think that the question that most of us have then is how do we help with that daily support, the, the preventative that you're talking to? How do we work towards that? Well, I think um, one of the big things that's missing most, and at least the carnivore side of the animal world, is the right mix of omega-3s mm -hmm. and fatty acids that support the immune response to uh, the inflammatory response to allergens. Um, omega-3 fatty acids um, play a critical role in modulating and controlling, regulating the inflammatory response, the, the prostaglandin and the cosinoid picture. And if, you're not, if an animal's not getting enough of those omega-3s, the system's already so far out of whack because it can't produce all of what it needs by itself. So being aware that, you know, proper nutrition and a diversity of, of, of good food, not just one food, but right. a diversity, so the body can randomly select what it needs on a daily basis based on the individual needs and the needs that fluctuate every day and eliminate, hopefully, efficiently, whatever excess there is or what it doesn't need. And that's the, that's the key. I know, it, you know, everyone wants me to stand here and say that, you know, reishi mushroom here, this big reishi mushroom, or reishi mushroom, or echinacea or something can solve um, all ills with an immune system imbalance or a cancer or something else. It, it can't. What these things do is they stimulate various aspects of the immune system, and in the case of all of these wonderful maitake, turkey tail mushrooms, uh, reishi mushrooms, they, they do stimulate the immune warriors at blood level. They, they killer T cells and, and, and such, they really stimulate production and activity. But you're way behind the curve if you wait for the, as you mentioned, the fort to be, the barriers to be breached to get there. You're sure. way behind the curve at that point. So in, in addition to omega-3s, adding digestive enzymes? Because the diversity in food, I mean, it, a Absolutely. lot of pets are fed processed food. You know, dry uh, kibble yeah, and, it's, and they don't have the necessary components to break it down. So that's another thing you can do just to keep it, you know, stable. You know, yeah. at least give it enough nutritional benefit to try to be balanced. And then, and then from there, once something uh, does present, because inevitably it does in human and animal wellness, then then that's when you start doing the preventative or reactive kind of herbal right. or interventions or whatever you choose to go, whatever pathway. You I'm choose. glad you brought up en enzymes because they are very important. Digestive enzymes and probiotics and Prebiotics, you know, prebiotics being foods such as chicory root or dandelion root or burdock root that support the, the nutrition and the reproduction of healthy microflora in the gut, mm -hmm. where a lot of your immunity in you know, dogs and cats and on animals' immunity exists. But, you know, also the enzymes, and in an imperfect world, this is what I mean by homeostasis and balanced health, doesn't just, the goal isn't to, to try to find it within us, but try to to the best capacity we can find it without us, outside of our body. <laughs> right. yeah. Because, you know, the influences are great, and in a perfect world, we'd be getting all of the enzymes and the probiotics, as would our dogs, cats, mm -hmm. birds, and everyone else, from the foods we eat, but it, it doesn't exist anymore. Because, you know, everything, in first, first of all, in the American food system, even organ, organic foods, they're better than anything, but mm -hmm. they've been washed some of them been sterilized, you know, basically before they get Radiated, to market. Right. <laughs> and, you know, we have this, in, in, in America especially, we have this aversion toward anything that feeds upon us, mm -hmm. you know? And we think that everything has to be killed that would normally crawl and interfere and create an infection, when in fact, a lot of the bacteria that dogs and cats and people should be eating should be stimulating those responses all the time in the body to keep the immune system functioning properly. So when, what we end up with as a result, and in, with our animals especially, because they eat very depleted food, and mm -hmm. many of them do, yeah. um, is it's an atrophied system. 
it's not working to its full potential because it's not challenged. And right. when it is challenged, it's challenged by influences it can't control. So it has to start on a bigger picture, and it's, you just can't pick up a bottle of echinacea, which will boost certain functions of a healthy immune system um, or, or mushroom therapies and such. And some of the mushrooms are doing amazing things, don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, Coriolis versicolor, turkey tail mushroom, there was a recent study from Penn State University involving dogs with hemangiosarcoma, which is a soft organ, very fast progressing cancer that begins generally in the spleen and spreads to the liver and other organs. And they've found that just a really modest dose of this mushroom has extended the life expectancy of these dogs double, hmm. you know. But it just, to me, it just raises questions of what are we missing? What, right. what, what is missing from the picture that's setting us and our animals up to, you know, this, these kind of problems? And the problems are growing very quickly, well, exponentially. We, <laughs> yeah. You, you had something to add? Well, we, we already talked about everything we're battling in our lives. And so then it leads us into, do we have to add something in responsive? You know, we're, we're talking about remedial herbs. And, and then that, there's a lot of questions about how to do that right too. Mm -hmm. So because you can't just, you can't, like cat's claw is an immune modulator. It's well known, South American herbal that people use very routinely in the US, all around the world, uh, but it isn't gonna solve the problem alone. So right. then you've got to get a, like a full spectrum that addresses every system that might be in a battle so you can get that balance. And, exactly. and that is where the mysticism comes in. How do you do the right kind of blend? Because normally it requires more than one um, or some kind of concert and, and um, sy synchronicity of, of complementary herbs to achieve that. That's where you talk to a herbalist or integrative vet or someone that has that kind of um, information or at least advice. And every animal's got to be examined differently. And that's me. where the healthcare diary comes in, whether it be mm -hmm. for yourself Good, or your yeah. animal, because you know there's clues throughout life. You know, I mean, a dog with chronic bad breath and no periodontal disease doesn't respond to anything herbally like uh, parsley root extract to reduce, you know, breath. That's all. You you know, all that kind of stuff. They're all clues that okay, there's something going on at a at a deeper level I need to correct. And if it goes unchecked, then the imbalance is going to get to a point in the system where either you're going to have an excess of something building up or a problem with the liver or a cancer or whatever because it, it's out of balance. I think of cancer a lot differently than most people do, I think, in that I think, and I've, I've talked with many immunologists about this, it's mm -hmm. not just my own personal opinion, is that we probably are born with the start of cancer mm -hmm. happening in our lives off and on various points. You know, this little pinpoint beginning of a blood supply to a, a group of cells that could otherwise become a tumor if our immune system wasn't intact enough to combat it and make it go away. And the unfortunate truth is, and I hear this from the same doctors, is that sometimes it's just unfortunate when it gets diagnosed because we just discovered it, we have to act upon it. Mm. And you know, the mind goes into play. Sure. And in many cases, I do believe that if we don't know what's happening, then the body <laughs> might just right. do Take a good job of, it. of correcting <laughs> itself. And I have a firm belief that if the body is given everything that it's needed, systemically throughout the entire body and not just one system that we suspect, mm. then it has healing abilities that are so far beyond any of our sciences. And you're not you know. just talking nutritional, you're also check, talking about emotional, environmental, right. spiritual, those kind of, yep. those kind of um, all those components come into. I, I mean, think the cutting edge though for immune support and you know, you remedial and, and preventative, but especially remedial, when we know that there's a big problem and the immune system's in trouble, I think the cutting edge is in, in my, from my training and what I've been studying, it's in mushrooms and it's in supporting the endocannabinoid system, which has been completely ignored <laughs> for over 70 years now. Sure. And you know, that's a whole other lecture and I'm, right. I'm, I'm writing on that right now. I just It is a whole other topic. <laughs> I just did a big lecture at a major conference on that and I, what I found about the endocannabinoid system is it's remarkable and it's neglected and basically it, it requires us to change our views on some very simple things that exists within us and outside of us. Sure. It's you know, it's a system of immunity that is not being honored by ca cannabinoid bearing plants, non-psychogenic. I'm not talking about psychotropic herbs. 
or you know, getting stoned on marijuana or getting your dog stoned. But there's a whole class of, of those medicinal plants that are being ignored because of the stigma of that hmm. subject. Sure. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a much bigger issue than I thought it was. Well, I think overall, everybody out there watching is saying it is a much bigger issue. My goodness, you've touched on so many different things, and yet we could have kept going. Yes. The discussion will continue going. Please share your thoughts with us. And thank you again for joining us for all of these wonderful topics here on Natural Pets TV. Financial and other considerations have been provided by Animal Essentials, Natura Pets Organics, the National Animal Supplement Council, and the Well Dog Place. Hey, pet parents, thanks for joining us. I gotta say, we are covering a lot of great topics, but I wanna hear from all of you. What things do you want our experts to be talking about, educating and sharing with you? Put that in the comments section down below. In the meantime, if you want more information about my good friend, Greg Tilford, you can get that at theanimalherbalist.com or at animalessentials.com or from my other good friend, Heidi Nevela, visit Natura Pets with a Z, Dot com. And as always, you can find us at PetWorldInsider.com.